Good afternoon, Crazy Russian 86 here. Welcome back to another video. And here I found this fellow, Mark Dice. I mean, I've been following him before, but now it's like he's been making a lot of interesting videos. He's conservative and Christian, of course. And I've been watching his last videos where he was talking about that Christians now chosen people, which made me think of brother Nathaniel because this is what he thinks. Well, I don't know, but here, I just want to see what he has to say about why Candace Sevens got fired, and I'm, I'm going to share my take on it as well. I'm not one of those YouTubers who tries to slap together a video as soon as possible once something happens to post it to be first, to try to get some views. Drinking some quiet beer parallel how the media actually works and hopefully get some laughs but this is no laughing matter of course the reason why candace owens was fired is rather obvious but the problem is in mainstream conservative politics you're not allowed to mention the obvious just like you're not allowed to criticize israel whatsoever no matter how accurate and valid and even mild that criticism is yep. that will get you called anti-semitic which is a label that is often thrown around in order to silence people that's a lot more dangerous much more dangerous than someone being called a racist early yesterday morning jeremy boring the daily wire ceo posted that they and candace owens have ended their relationship which is a fancy way of saying that they bought out the remainder of her contract because technically they couldn't fire you know, it's funny because, you know, when I talk to some Jewish people, like my relatives and stuff, about that type of stuff, they say, you know what, it's not true. You know, like, in this day and age, you know, you can, uh, they just don't like any type of hate, not just anti-Semitism. So when you say that, you know what, if you're anti-Semitic, you get in trouble, but you're not going to get in trouble for racism. You know, and you say this is not true, like, if you're going to talk to the Jew about it, a Zionist about it, they're going to, they're not going to, they're going to say that you are not saying the truth. In fact, they may say you're anti-Semitic, they're going to say that, you know what, this algorithms of Google and everything, that's for everyone. That's not just for the Jews, you know. And then you say, well... Why in that case, if like, you know, you speak badly about the Jews or about the COVID, your videos are getting banned without like any type of consideration, any type of, you know, explanation. But if you like make racist videos, nobody cares. Like I've been watching some videos where some people used to say N-word and they used to cast black people out. Nobody cares. But if you say something about the Jews, even mildly like, yeah, you, you, your videos get like, Deleted for no reason, and then you're gonna get a strike. You know, so. But. Fire her because she didn't violate the terms of her contract, but because she was talking about things that are completely taboo in conservative mainstream politics, upsetting Ben Shapiro and the Republican establishment, the neocons. She needed to be silenced, and so they paid the remainder of her contract and then sent her on her way, which was likely around $10 million because she was probably making about $3 million a year, had several years left on her contract. Not that she even needs that money because her husband is exceedingly wealthy, the heir to like a precious metals company who has a net worth of over $100 million. I don't know if you've seen Candace Owens' wedding ring, but she's rocking like $100,000 with the diamonds or diamond earrings, $50,000. The girl is loaded. Glenn Greenwald noted it was only a question of time, adding there was no way an outlet founded and built around Ben Shapiro could possibly remain associated with a vocal critic of U.S. financing of Israel. One of Candace's response was, my crime is that I do not believe that American taxpayers should have to pay for Israel's wars or the wars of any other country. I will not change my mind. So the question is, what will you do to me next? The world is watching. But all this started when Candace Owens refused to condemn and instead defended Kanye West when he started talking about problems that he had with a certain group of people in the music industry because Kanye West gave her career a big boost and the two had become friends. And 
as Kanye later revealed on another podcast, The Daily Wire then banned Candace from even interviewing him to try to hear him out. They told Candace Owens, I couldn't be on The Daily Wire. Like, you can't even explain yourself. And we don't care of how you got to that point either. And that's f***ed up. They told Candace you can't be on Daily Wire? It's not even about... Yes, she did. That's what they said. But the straws that broke the camel's back started piling up back in October after the latest flare-up between Israel and Palestine and the ongoing 75-year-old ethnic land dispute between the two different groups over various territories. When Candace expressed sadness over the thousands and thousands of innocent civilians, children, and women who Israel killed in their response to the horrific attack that Hamas perpetrated back in early October. That and Candace didn't want the United States getting involved militarily or financially because the United States gives Israel billions of dollars in American tax dollars every single year and made a comment about how Nikki Haley kept seemingly putting Israel's interest ahead of the United States by saying this sarcastic comment. Well, I am here today to endorse Nikki Haley for president of Israel. I think she's earned that. I think Bibi Netanyahu is going through a very bad time right now. Support for Israel has virtually collapsed socially. If you're paying attention to the trends and you're paying attention to what people are watching, you're paying attention to the protests. And the one person that I think is capable of getting it back is Nikki Haley with enough money from foreign interest lobbies. But the last straw. Well, you know, I grew up in a kind of Zionist family, even though I didn't really have a normal family. You know, I grew up with a single mom, and then when I came to America with my to live with my dad, whom I barely knew. You know, he was very Zionist. Like, and I remember they've been watching a lot of political videos. You know, when I used to live with him, I was at the time between the ages of like 19 and 22. So, that was like long time ago, 15 to 18 years ago. And I remember they've been watching a lot of videos and they used to talk a lot about like, oh, this guy is anti-Semite. I don't like his policy on Israel. And I started thinking to myself too, like, wait a minute. We're living in the United States of America, right? Not the United States of Israel. Why do we need to care about Israel? And they say, oh, Israel is the only democracy on the Middle East, etc., etc., etc. A couple of days ago, I watched the video of one Muslim woman who lives in Israel. And she was actually saying, you know what? I actually like it over there. I like Jewish people. I think that, you know, Hamas, they're just a bunch of arrogant bastards who took the power and people living so unhappily under them and people running away. They don't want it. We really need to take care of that type of stuff. We need, really need to get rid of Hamas. Well, but there are a lot of things which still puzzles me in spite of that. Number one, when I see this video of religious Muslims who have been beaten up by Israeli police, why? You know, when they just... I'm not talking about just woman, you know, Muslim woman. They're definitely not a threat. They're not dangerous. Why this Israel is not letting them go to the fucking mosque? Then I see this video of Israelis telling Christian people to get the fuck out. And then even worse, when I see the videos of Israeli police beating up on religious Jews, Naturei Karta, mind you, I'm not talking about like, you know, ethnic Jews who look like Jewish people. I'm talking about people who actually like following their religion. They call them anti-Semites and they've been beating them up. And the funny thing about that is that these religious Jews, they're actually following their own religion. And Judaism formed as a religion to begin with. And think about this way. These people who call themselves Jews, who don't even follow their own religion, they're beating the crap out of people who live by their religion. Mind you, Judaism got formed as a religion, not as an ethnic group. And it became Judaism, you know, it became because of the idea that there is one God. 
This is how Judaism started. It didn't start with fucking matzah, bagels, whatever. You know, it started with an idea there is one God. Shema Israel, Adonai Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Here, Israel, there is one God. That's what it says. And Jewish people, they came from modern, uh, from the modern day area of Iraq. According to the Old Testament, they've been told by God to conquer Israel, which was before called Canaan. So, and now, 3,335 years later, because this is the time when Moshe lived, so Jewish people probably conquered, they probably conquered Canaan, it was like about, <coughs> 1270 before Christ and I went to Egyptian museum with my mom and even like in late 13th century before Christ it was still Canaan over there so I'm thinking Jewish people conquered that land soon after so and now they're saying oh we want this land but I'm sorry you know how many black people been like taken out of Africa they're not saying, like, modern-day African-Americans, they're not saying, hey, you know what, genetically I'm Sierra Leonean, or I'm Nigerian, I need to go back to Nigeria. Like, some people feel that way, but most of them, they really don't. You know? And these people, actually, that's ancestors actually came from that land. Versus Jewish people, the ancestors, Abraham Avinu, was from Iraq. So what, Jewish people should say, I need to go to Iraq? You know, it's funny, because I used to have an Iraqi friend, Ahmad. And I really like that guy. <laughs> it's funny how we connected. Maybe I need to talk to him. Well, I don't know if I'm going to talk to him again, because things are weird. But And I don't want any type of, like, weird relationship with him. You know, back in the day when we were just friends, you know, everything was cool. You know, we had, like, common interests. We like to think about life, talk about life. But then now he has a family, he has a different life. Last time I saw him, but it was back in 2019, when I started living with oh, Alima. And uh, I remember, you know, I got impressed because of my bed, because when we moved in together, we have like really nice bed from Valley City Furniture. And I started showing him, look, if I press this button, that bed, have the slides, you know, and I thought that's cool because I never had a bed like that in my life. So I remember Alima told me, Oh, Emil, you're acting so fucking childish. But Ahmad didn't say anything, but for me it was like, you know, for me it was like, I was like, well, maybe childish, but I don't know how else should I act. <laughs> but you know, I, I thought it was cool, you know, like, that's why I thought it was a thing, because before, I never had a bed where I could, like, literally push the button and the bed start lighting up like this. And it's funny, in my reels, I saw one black woman having bed exactly like the one I used to have at that place. Really nice, comfortable bed where you can press the button and lights come up. It's cool, it's really cool. But... Apparently, it's childish to show things like this, but, you know, to me, it's something I never had in my life. So I was looking at it like, wow. And it's funny, you know, I'm a white man. And black people think that white men, they have all the money. Especially white Jewish people. And here I am thinking, oh, my God, it's so fancy that the bed has lights on it. I always, like, slept, like, like in bed, which is, like, nothing special about it, you know. But... That's not the point. Let's get back to the fucking video. You know, I'm talking about my life Monday, again. Which was an hour and 43 minutes with a rabbi who had smeared her as an anti-Semite in an article which has since been retracted that was posted on PJ Media. And she completely humiliated him. I'm fighting every single day against crooked prosecutors and judges that hate our country there's something wrong with them it's so bad what's going on but we're fighting and we're winning and we're going to take our country back these fascists and communists and people that you would have never thought we'd have to worry about but you have to worry now because they're destroying our country millions of people are being allowed in many from jails and but tell us man how you know what 
I just paused this ad, but I didn't want it to. And I didn't mean to put the ads on. But I feel like this ad goes very well to do this video. When Donald Trump talking about this communists and fascists taking our freedoms away from us. And that speaks volumes. Three years ago, I lost my monetization on YouTube. Not that I've been making a lot of money. I've been only making like $100 a year, but the way they did it, they literally took my monetization out when I was about to get another paycheck. And I should have gotten because, uh, you know, they do it on a monthly basis. And it was actually month of March. It was actually March 21st to March 22nd. I think it was March 21st of 21 when they took it away from me. And I already had like balance on end of February was like 95 some dollars. The balance between March 1st and March 21st was already like almost $5. So really, I already broke the threshold, but they never gave me $100, which I should have gotten. And I was complaining about it at first and people say, oh, you deserved it. You don't deserve the money because you're fucking racist. Because you fucking bigot. Nobody cared about that before. Now, I'm drinking these beers. And this is my first beer today. What is one pint and three and a half ounces, which is, I don't know, what I assume it's probably like, oh, it's only like 19.2 ounces, that's all. Okay, 19 ounces, 19.2 ounces. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. That's the only beer I've been drinking today. Before I used to drink it way more, way more. And now my family talking about me becoming alcoholic because I drink maybe like two or three beers a week. But before I used to drink way more than I'm drinking now and nobody gave a shit. It's all fucking bullshit. It's all manipulation. I'm sure there are a lot of college kids who are like having jobs, making money, you know, and then in the evening they go into the bars, you know, getting girls, getting drunk, having fun. Nobody fucking cares. But if I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to put it on the internet, guess what? I'm an alcoholic now. You know, there is another funny thing that that uh, Muslim woman said, who lives in Israel, she said that, you know, she said, as a Muslim, I, I actually don't face discrimination because it's easier for me to get in the cultures and get in the job than it is for Jewish people. And that makes me wonder because, you know, according to the Judaism, you know, it's like, you have to really work hard and you have to suffer and then you're be going to become on top. It actually works just like the way life works, really. So Jews, Jewish people are chosen people, but they are chosen so they have to work hard in order to get a bigger reward in the future. But meantime, they experience bigger suffering. You see? So it's like the principle is like this. You have to incur bigger suffering in order to get a bigger reward. So they look at it like this. The fact that this Muslim woman, she's getting stuff easier than the Jews. Guess what? She's actually inferior to them. Because they're the Jewish people. They're going to be working harder to get to the same place. But then they're going to get bigger reward than this Muslim woman. So it's like she thinks that life is easier for her. But... In reality, it's not. And that's like a big principle in Jewish religion, you know. We suffer, but then, you know, we're going to have a big reward in the future. You know, it's funny that people say it's a Christian, but you know, since Jesus was a Jew, Christianity took so much from Judaism. It's crazy. But anyway, let's watch There's it. There's only something that the left engages in. So as we'll see, again, I'm, I'm just foreshadowing because you need to know where I'm going here. Okay, the fact is that the cancel culture exists. It is extraordinarily ugly. It's particularly ugly for people on the left, actually. Because if, if you're on the right, like I know conservatives 
are not interested in canceling other conservatives and they're not going to go along with this. If you're on the left, you probably will be canceled because your own crowd is going to flee from you screaming and running for the hills with their hair on fire the minute that you are called out as anything approaching a racist. Actually, Ben, it's quite obvious to everyone now that mainstream conservatives do that. Somebody is called an anti-Semite. In fact, the Daily Wire is siding with the ADL on this because on Thursday, one day before she was fired, oh, I'm sorry, technically had her contract bought out and decided to part ways, uh, the ADL started ramping up a cancel culture campaign against Candace. And let's not forget what Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring said back in November when the conservative cancel culture mob started surrounding Candace when she expressed sadness about the civilians on both sides that were dying over in Israel and in Palestine. Because to the neocons, the mainstream conservatives, all Palestinians, everyone in Gaza is considered to be guilty. I'm currently on leave of absence for my executive duties while overseas producing some pathetic movie games. And in my current capacity, he says I cannot fire Candace Owens. That's something Ben and I have in common, since he is also not an executive in the company and cannot hire or fire people because he stepped down as the co-CEO or the editor-in-chief just to basically be talent and then had other people take those roles over. But, he says, even if we could, we would not fire Candace because another thing we have in common, a desire not to regulate the speech of our hosts even when we disagree with them. Can't... <laughs> Never trusted Drew. Oops, did I really say that? Well, I'm only 70.7% .7 Jewish genetically, so I guess you can trust me a little bit, but... You know. Ben Shapiro talking about I'll never fire Candace Sovens. And here he is fired here. Right. Candace is paid to give her opinion, not mine or Ben's, unless those opinions run afoul of the law or she violates the terms of her contract in some way. Her job is secure. She is always welcome at the Daily Wire. Now, Candace Owens' show or podcast. No, it's funny. I've been losing jobs, I've been running places. And um, nobody told me anything, but apparently it turns out that people were talking about some kind of contract. And people have been acting weird around me and everything. And even the rabbi, when I used to go to the synagogue, was talking about, oh, you can't attack like this as a part of the country. And I'm thinking to myself, I didn't sign any country. But then I've been doing Instagram, I've been doing other things. I feel like I should file because I feel like it was wrongful termination. But apparently I didn't follow some kind of contract which I didn't even sign or anything. So, so, and I've been listening to people, listening to this, what's going around me. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Can I trust a Jew? But I'm a Jew too, so it's like I have similar mentality, so... I guess I'm that type of person who is gonna... who is not gonna succumb to their bullshit. That's what you want to call it, will continue. She posted a link to her old personal YouTube channel, which the Daily Wire doesn't have any control over, and she likely will be joining Rumble or have her production company start syndicating her podcast to all the other podcast platforms. So she's definitely not going away. But also, she couldn't help but use the situation to try to grift a little, to be honest. As you know, to me, there are no sacred cows. One of the benefits of being truly independent is I don't have to keep my mouth shut because... I don't have to worry about offending a company that I work for, like Matt Walsh not saying anything about it, none of the other Daily Wire staff saying anything about it. They don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. Other people in the industry usually keep their mouth shut because they don't want to criticize other hosts who should be criticized in some cases.
because they want to be on their shows. They want to go to certain events. I don't want to be on their shows. I don't want to go to certain events. I don't care. The rumors are true. I'm finally free. If you would like to support my work, you can head over to CandaceOwens.com, where you will be directed to my Locals page, which is like a private Facebook page. It's a subscription only for like five bucks a month. Very common in the independent media. Of course, I have one, but I'm just a guy in my kitchen on a laptop. I wasn't getting paid millions of dollars by Big Con, by Conservative Inc. And then this is where it gets really pathetic. I totally understand plugging Locals page. Totally normal. Or you can give a gift at GoCandice.com. Where the website is just straight up soliciting donations. Like the poor girl's unable to feed her kids or pay her rent. Like I said, she was making $3 million a year and her husband's worth over $100 million. Would you like to give Candace Owens $100 a month or $250 a month on recurring donations? May I remind you that independent media outlets and personalities like InfoWars and myself are all... Well... Think about me that I'm almost broke, so I can't give money to nobody. But I wish I could. Always many years, if not decades, ahead of the mainstream conservative media outlets who are always beholden to a certain set of rules and being controlled by certain interests. And so they always have to wait until it becomes more than obvious that it's safe to talk about certain issues that independents trailblaze and raise awareness of before finally they will weigh in on the obvious and so it was alex jones who gave candace owens her first big boost inviting her in studio after she was a nobody when she just started a youtube channel and had a very interesting critique of black lives matter thanks for coming into town i'm so happy to be here great to have you uh, you're even more impressive in person. It's, it's, it's uh, wonderful to have you. Where should you start? The few months we got to break. I think you should recap right. what the feminist cult tried to do to you. Uh, you know, in your own words, they just thought basically you're a woman. Uh, you're reportedly, you know, supposedly a minority, uh, and then you show you belong to them. Right. Then she was brought into the inner circle of conservative Inc. through Turning Point USA, and then Prager U, and then ultimately at the Daily Wire, and so. Conservative Inc. is very sad that their token black conservative now has gone to, in their view, the dark side. Uh, first off, um, the cleanest way I can tell you this is that when, when Candace started getting real famous and the Kanye thing happened and everything else, one day out of nowhere she unfollowed me on Twitter. So I had sort of helped her get to a certain extent, and then she unfollowed a bunch of people. Like She had a bunch of people that she followed. He helped her. He boosted Candace Owens and made her a superstar. And then, and then she unfollowed me. So I took that sort of as like a mark of just like, and I'm not trying to break here. I really am not, actually. Uh, you took it as an obvious point that she realized that you are a loser in conservative ink. But I just kind of took that of a mark of like, oh, like, there is a limit to our friendship. Like, it was sort of transactional for you to a degree. Then, I don't know, a couple of years ago, she changed her... You know, that's why, you know, I don't give a fuck about humanity in general. That's why I say life is overrated forever and Elliot Roger forever. These are the people whom I personally like. Because they just don't give a fuck. Elliot Roger, he is a fighter for the right of autistic people. Instead of, you know, being for diversity and inclusion and trying to become normal and all of that and all the bullshit real PewDiePie talks about, you know what he did? He did the right thing. Because he couldn't get pussy because there's something wrong with him. What did he do? He said, girls, I have money, you need to give me pussy. If you don't do what I want, it means you fucking bitch and you don't think right. If you don't think right, it means you fucking bitch. It means a piece of shit. And shit needs to be cleaned up. You fucking piece of human excrement. Therefore, you deserve to die. And I'm going to punish you because I have a power, I have money, I can buy guns and I can kill you fucking bitch. And I agree with him, you know. If I was in his shoes, I mean, I wouldn't do the same thing. I probably would pay for the price it's you personally. You know, because I'm not stupid like that, but I really don't blame him for doing what he did. You know, I really don't blame Elliot Roger for the things he did. And this is the same thing you're talking about, survival of the fittest, you know. You can do something for somebody, but if somebody get on top of you and they prove that oh, I'm bigger than you, they kind of outgrow you. So what do they do with you? They just dispose you like a piece of shit. You know, this is how people are. People are shit. And you know why I like uh, fucking 
Life is over 80, 96, because that's how he feels. He's like, fuck everything. Life is all about going to work. And people are talking about, oh, I'm important, you not, ta, ta, ta. He doesn't give a fuck. He just goes to work because he wants to survive and he wants to enjoy life and have sex. You know, that's why he's dating 50-year-old woman with the kids. And he did vexectomy because, and I read on vexectomy a couple days ago, and I'm like, damn, this man is right. Because on one hand, he wants to have sex. He wants to be like a normal man. But at the same time, and he wants to do it without a condom, of course, which is, of course, I understand him on that one too. But at the same time, you know, he doesn't want to have kids. And he actually got the best of both worlds because he can fuck the woman he likes without a condom and he can come inside of her as many times as he wants to and he's not going to have kids, he's not going to get her in trouble, you know. I mean, shit, he, he got it all made, you know. He got it all made, he's a good man, you know, like, fuck. I'm happy for him, if anything, shit. He's doing the right thing in my eyes. That's why I like that guy, you know. Because if I was in his shoes, I would leave this. I would do exactly the same thing. And I would do, do, you know, like what he's doing. He's like, you know, like the way he thinks, the way he acts. It's like, reminds me he, so much of myself, you know. I look at the life of over 8 96, and that reminds me of myself. Okay, enough of this bullshit. Now I'm going to be like, I'm going to do life is overrated 96 thing at the end of this video you know even though i drink a little bit but i'm not drunk i'm not an alcoholic and because life is overrated 96 he's not jewish you know he's like half hispanic and half white you know he has more freedoms than me because he don't care about nothing he doesn't care about religion all all of the problem he has in life is that you know, uh, he is, uh, what, life was all about going to work. I remember in my body chat, he said, you know what, even if you don't have a problem, your mind going to create a problem. I don't know all, everything about his life, but sometimes I feel like he's actually lucky because of all he was worrying about is he has to work like fucking 60, 70 hours a day. Well, I had that problem before. There is a bigger problem sometimes that you cannot work anywhere you want. People acting funny around you. You're afraid that if you're going to lose it and go crazy, you're going to lose the job. You're going to be under the bridge. And then you have to deal with all these fucking kikes around you who's going to say, hey, you can live fine. I can do this for you, that for you. But you need to break up with your girlfriend. Oh, don't date this woman. She's not Jewish. Don't date that person. Don't go out with that person. It's all about ethnic purity of Jewish race, according to Jewish people. So, if you are not all about that, you're fucking anti-Semitic piece of shit. That's it. That's why a lot of people, they just like, you know what? I want to get the fuck out. And that reminds me also of the documentaries I watched a long time ago about the Hasidic cult, which is called Left Ahor. And also pretty strict cult, also like very strict, and they're like abusing people for not following the God's will and everything. And there is like a lot of teenagers who are just like say fuck this and they were running away. And starting following their passions. You know? Both Jewish boys and girls. They're just like, fuck this. I want to do my own thing. I don't care about that shit. I like to be following the cult which I don't agree with. And getting abused all the time. Like, fuck that. I'm out. You see? That's... That's what it is. Goes well with what's going on with Candace Sovens. She's like, fuck this, I'm out. I want to do my own thing. I'm free. She lost the job with the money, but she feels like she's free. Well, 
I know. I feel pretty, you know. When it comes to my life, I'm actually feeling like pretty. Fuck. I really want to have more space in here. There is one thing, this is of somebody from my job. First he gave it to me for some time, then he sold it to me for 15 bucks. Oh fuck. I need some space here to do my exercises. So, fuck. That looked too good, the fucking bed and shit. It's not the best picture, but uh, I've been watching, I've been showing these exercises, you know, for the back. You know, and when I was at work, there's one girl, she was talking funny, I don't know, maybe she was autistic too, I don't know. And she was talking about, oh, I don't like the noises, ta ta ta. And I told her how I feel. And I said, I don't like the people are fucking bitching at me at work all the time. So... But it's not a normal job. There are psychologists everywhere I go. They're trying to fix me. And that's why I want to fuck them up too. Because I I, I, I like my freedoms. I don't care. You know? I want to do what I want and act how I want and fuck everybody else. If you don't think the way I think, if you're not going to give me what I want without asking me no questions, it means you're a piece of shit. It means you fucking piece of shit and you deserve to die. It means it's your mother recorded and that is a faggot. Because you need to give me what I want without asking me no fucking questions. Because you need to think how I think. If not a piece of shit, if I have power, I can kill you, motherfucker. This is how I feel, you know. It's all about doing what I want in any kind of... And then other people don't let me do what I want. It means what? They're fucking mistakes to be corrected. That's it. And yes, other people have their desires, their opinion, their lives, etc., etc. I get it. But that's the reason why I work hard. And I want to work a lot of hours. So I do the best I can for other people. So I can survive. So I can isolate myself from this society of these fucking infidels. That's it. You know, if you want to be about it. Anyway, guys, I have an order. I'm going to make money. I'm going to do my push-ups later.